Hi gang, one of the most compelling things about Warhammer is the ability for players to make unique armies, their guys, to expand the universe by inventing their own planet or chapter of space marines, their own colour scheme and backstory. But in the Horus Heresy, at least at first glance, there are fewer opportunities for that, right? It's often likened to a historical game, 18 space marine legions, each with their own set colour scheme. But Heresy isn't a historical game. It's all made up, and there are loads of ways to make your army look unique. And in this video, we'll go through six of them. So you want to start an army for Horus Heresy, but you're not one of those people who just paints the box art. You like armies that feel unique yours, and unlike anything else out there. And you're a bit worried that in the Horus Heresy, there just aren't as many options for you to make your own army. And you're kind of right. Heresy isn't quite the free-for-all 40k is, and there are definitely some people who want to play it like it was a historical game. But at the same time, it isn't as fixed as some people might assume. Even in the published books, there are loads of examples of alternate colour schemes and unique heraldry that were used by this or that company. And the reason those are included in the books is as inspiration. Just like in 40k, the background is there so that you can build on it. The key to all these suggestions is remembering that your army is just one tiny company within a much larger organisation. The 18 legions were massive, hundreds of thousands of Astartes spread out across the galaxy and sometimes badly supplied, especially once the heresy kicked off. And none of the legions have been mapped out in perfect detail. Nobody has stated what the 177th company of the Ultramarines did. Were they a line company or a recon company? Did they have a famous commander? or a history in the Unification Wars, or become something else after the Heresy. The existing background gives us examples of all those things, and those examples are there so that, well, you can decide. So in this I'm going to suggest six ways you can make a unique force, all of which are at least supported by the existing lore, and then a few examples in action at the end. But first, my six examples are going to concern Space Marines, but the most obvious way to give yourself some more freedom is just not to play them. There are other armies in the Heresy, I've got a video about them, and the colour schemes for Mechanicum, Solar Auxilia, Talons of the Emperor and Night Houses are just as flexible as they are in 40k. But fine, we want Space Marines, let's customise our Space Marines. <laughs> The legions all had set colour schemes, right? Sons of Horus are green, half of them are black, ultramarines are blue. Well, yeah, but when you look at the colour plates from the Forge World Black books, you find that it's not quite as simple as that. Take the Dark Angels. In the Horus Heresy, their armour was black, with red detailing and occasional chequered patterns. But during the Heresy, some of the legionnaires from Caliban started a shift to dark green, sometimes just their pauldrons. And a tradition also evolved of damaged parts from particularly grievous injuries being replaced with bone coloured armour. So there's a load of options even there. Does your company favour black or green? What about bone pauldrons to commemorate a particularly grievous battle? Or reversing the scheme and doing completely bone armour from when that company suffered a horrendous loss within the crusade? Only their pauldrons left black. Maybe that's just how your company veterans look. All of that would be justified by what we know about the Dark Angels in the background. Emperor's children were purple, but also gold, and also silver. Imperial Fists were yellow, but also black and white. The World Eaters were blue and white, but we know they started to use red and brass during the Heresy. And Alpha Legion are shown in any number of colours from purple to green and all the blues in between. You can still stick with Legion colours, but just reverse them or arrange them in a new combination. <laughs> We also know that Space Marines altered their schemes somewhat based on where they were fighting. Older 40k fluff loves to put Astartes in crazy camo schemes, and the Bad Ab War series not only reprises that, but adds the concept of night camo, darkened armour with just heraldry showing on the shoulders. But the heresy includes that too. There are colour plates of Crusade era forces in camo, which obviously massively increases the schemes available to you. Fine, some legions may be more likely to use it than others, but every legion included reconnaissance squads or seeker squads who are way more likely to be seen in it. 
Maybe your company just got back from a guerrilla campaign in a far off sector, or maybe they're a specialist recon company. And of course, using rogue trader ideas in Heresy is very thematic, though I don't envy whoever chooses this old scheme for their salamanders. We also know that certain colours were associated with certain unit types, so destroyer squads who used the most dangerous weaponry often painted their armour black, but say White Scars destroyer squads painted their armour red. The Ultramarines 22nd chapter, known as the Nemesis chapter, specialised in destroyer operations and would have had support units and characters and vehicles too, all painted in their colour scheme. Maybe your whole Astartes company paint their armour in the same way, based on whatever sort of specialists they're famous for. <laughs> When many of the legions were founded, they used totally different colour schemes to the ones we're used to, often only adopting their famous symbols and colours when they reunited with their Primarch. But at the time of the heresy, many of the legions still included units that have been fighting since the early days, and incorporating elements of those older schemes can be a good way to theme your army. Look at the Thousand Suns. In the heresy era, they're depicted in red with white and gold details, and we know that at the end of the heresy, they would switch to blue with gold details details. But before they were reunited with Magnus, they looked like this. Bone with orange pauldrons and the Roman M standing for a thousand. Maybe your army is led by some grizzled Terran veterans who want to do honour to their origins by keeping their pauldrons the orange of the pre-heresy scheme. Or their armour bone with red and gold details. In fact, we know that loyalist factions within the traitor legions might revert to their older schemes to show their status. There are loyalist sons of Horus in the novels who revert to the symbols and colours of the Lunar Wolves, and examples of world eaters who still prefer to think of themselves as warhounds. Maybe your army changed their markings after the heresy broke out to show their allegiance, or just like to pay honour to their origins. <laughs> After the heresy, the Loyalist legions were broken down into successor chapters, and the traitor legions split up into loads of warbands. And looking at these can be good, fluffy ways to personalise your army. The 22nd Company of the Ultramarines we mentioned earlier became the Nemesis chapter after the war, though they changed their colours to green, which probably isn't much use to us. But there are plenty of examples of successor chapters whose colours remained pretty similar. The 90th Company of Ultramarines became the Nova Marines after the heresy, and their quartered colour scheme was based on the personal heraldry of their captain, Lucretius Corvo. The first assault corps of the Imperial Fists were commanded by Fafnir Ran, whose heraldry was the Twin Axes, and after the heresy they became the Execution executioners and change their colours to silver. Building a heresy-era 90th Company Ultramarine army with their veterans, or even the whole army, in quartered blue and white, or Fafnir Rand's Imperial Fists army in silver and yellow, would both be pretty accurate to the established background. And there are loads of other second founding successors that haven't yet been linked back to any specific company in the heresy. The Marauders are a second founding successor of the White Scars. Want to build their yellow and white heresy equivalent? Or maybe do the same for Chaos Warbands? No one's sure where a warband like The Purge came from. <laughs> Of course, for anyone who wants to ignore all this and do whatever they want, there is always black shields. These represent the rogue elements in the heresy that became more and more common as the Civil War ground on. Jaded elements of existing legions who decided to go renegade and carve out their own pocket empires as the war raged on. Or legionnaires who were ashamed by the actions of their Primarch and decided to rebrand anonymously, fighting on in the name of Horus or the Emperor or even experimental units and test assets created for some specific purpose and then forgotten about when the war broke out. They're called black shields, but they can have any colour scheme you want. Finally, if you want something a bit more than just a paint scheme, there are loads of modelling options too. We know that there were specific marks of armour used in the Heresy, and we know that some legions preferred different marks to others, though they used them all. But we also know that as well as these marks, there were local variants. Different forge worlds made things differently. Legion artificers took inspiration from their home cultures. The World Eaters are known for their use of Sarum pattern helmets, as they were supplied by the forge world of Sarum. But what if your Iron Hands were crusading on that side of the galaxy too, or intercepted supplies? from that forge world after the heresy broke out. This also counts for weapons or vehicles. We know there was huge variation beyond what Games Workshop sells, and using old models or variant converted models is a good way to represent that. This can also be a great way of incorporating fantasy or third-party bits into your force, 3D sculpts or homemade parts, or elements from other ranges. There is a certain heresy aesthetic to try and hit, but you don't have to stick to the current correct armour mark for your legion. 
Well, that's all interesting enough, but what about some actual examples? Well, here's three heresy armies I've been making that might serve as inspiration. Sick of painting pristine perfect purple on your emperor's children? Well, by the Siege of Terror, they're described as a riot of clashing colours and filth, living only for excess and all their previous uniformity lost. So my emperor's children are very late heresy. Pink, muddied, rusty, caked in dirt, and with loads of mixed armour marks and chaos bits kit bashed in. In fact, this is me reusing elements of my 40k Chaos Marine and Renegades armies in 30k. I just painted up some regular Heresy Marines and Specialist units in the same scheme, and then used the existing Malkadors, Rhinos, and Dreads. Some of these are old Hammer models, which fits right in with the Heresy, including these 90s Noise Marines I use as Cacophony, and there are third party bits mixed in too to make them look more varied. Late Heresy Traitor Legions are a really good way to go wild with the schemes and mix in 30k and 40k looks together. And if you haven't been playing for a while, painting up a few squads of Heresy era models might give new life to an existing army. Let's try and use some pre-Heresy imagery. For our next Tale of Four Gamers, I'm planning a White Scars army, but while I want to use jet bikes and speeders, I also want my guys to be unique. So here is my idea for the Brotherhood of the Void. Before they discovered their Primarch, the Fifth Legion was split into hundreds of pioneer companies, each with their own heraldry and operating independently as the scouts of the Great Crusade. When Jagatai Khan pulled the Legion together, they became the White Scars, but my Brotherhood, formed from the ashes of the 666th Pioneer Company, the Void Devils, wanted to pay homage to their origins, so they became the Brotherhood of the Void, keeping their old livery on one shoulder pad and painting their newly adopted tribe markings in the black of deep space. While the Brotherhood of the Void has changed a lot since then, its origins as naval combat and boarding specialists can still be seen, along with the more normal jet bikes and speed Leaders, the Brotherhood still maintains its older armaments, breacher squads and cataphracty terminators, all the better for boarding actions in the deep, and reserves of Volkite weaponry that the veterans and tech marines of the Brotherhood still consider more reliable. Even the newer recruits, the Mark VI marines from the box, will be armed with Volkite. I haven't built this army yet, but that's the idea. Finally, what if you want to use up some existing bits? The tenth company of the unspeaking chapter of the word bearers are the unspeaking chapter's reserve company, and something of a punishment battalion for its officers. The tenth company maintain all the older, almost obsolete weaponry and armor marks of the chapter, and during the heresy it was all quickly pressed into service to replace losses. At least that's what I've decided. I knew I wanted to use Zardu, Blade Slaves, and the Galvor back in my word bearers army, and Zardu leads the unspeaking chapter, but I also wanted to use a load of rogue trader vehicles that I had and some anvil industry and max mini bits, some spare assault cannons for some old war zone models, you know, that sort of thing, and this was my way of doing it. The 10th company looked like they're built from scraps of old armor, and most of the marines aren't even official Games Workshop or Heresy bits, but even so, I think they're a pretty good approximation of Heresy marines. They look like they fit in that world, and all the rogue trader vehicles just help. And if you're unsure, I took these guys as allies to my renegades to a few heresy tournaments and no one seems to have a problem. They look heresy enough for everyone else too. So there we go. Hopefully this shows that there's a lot more variation in the heresy than it first seems and plenty of room for you to create your own chapter or even your own color scheme and still make it feel like it fits within the setting. And if you've got any unique ideas or you want to run them past someone before you start painting, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.